Hello. Uh, my name is Abigail Lustig. I'm a professor in the history department at UT Austin. I'm a historian whose particular prof professional expertise is as a historian of science uh, and especially a historian of biology and of evolution. I've published quite widely on that subject, many articles, and have edited a book. And I've come to speak to you today on the basis of that professional expertise as a historian. Uh, speaking to that particular expertise, I, I would like to commend you on the uh, standard that calls on students to assess the arguments for and against the proposed, proposed revision, that is, to assess the arguments for and against universal common descent. Uh, this is, in fact, an excellent teex. Uh, it's just in the wrong place. It should be, in fact, in the history teex. There were very, very lively arguments for and against the theory of common descent that went on in the 10 or 15 years after the publication, 150 years ago this year, of Darwin's Origin of Species. Darwin's Origin of Species made two separate arguments, uh, and this is something that is often conflated, uh, and I've heard it here so today. One was a historical question. Have, in fact, species uh, modified over time? Have lineages modified over time? Darwin argued in The Origin that they had, and he drew on a very wide array of evidence from different parts of biology to argue this, from biogeography, from systematics, from comparative anatomy, from embryology, and from elsewhere. The second part was to argue that if this were a historical fact, to ask how it had occurred, for which he proposed a mechanism, natural selection. The reception of these two parts of Darwin's theory were different. There were, as I said, very lively arguments as to whether or not evolution had occurred. But within 10 or 15 years at the most after the publication of The Origin, these arguments were over. Nearly all reputable biologists and those who were left disputing the fact of evolution, the historical fact of evolution, were increasingly isolated. Nearly all reputable biologists by about 1873 or so were convinced that evolution was a fact, whatever the mechanism that had made it occur may have been. I believe that to require students or to ask students to assess the weaknesses and the arguments for and against uh, universal common descent is seriously to mislead them over the depth, the breadth, and the length of the historical consensus that has prevailed since the 1870s as to the fact of evolution. I'm also a student of the history, the history of the controversies over teaching evolution in the United States. And I'm sorry to say that it is quite clear that the proposed amendments to the language uh, of the TEKS is part of a long history of attempts of, from members of certain Christian sects, by no means even representing a consensus view of Christians of responses to evolution to inject religious views into scientific curricula, a, an approach which has been rejected by courts up to and including the United States Supreme Court as a violation of the Constitution's establishment cause repeatedly. Uh, for both these reasons, I urge the panel to return to the draft language uh, from the Curriculum Writers Panel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? Be fun to be in one of your classes, but anyway, tell me a little bit more about, you know, they're, they're just really so upset about the word weakness. So could you expand a little bit on that and why it, it's unnecessary to be in the uh, updated TEKS? Uh, the question of weakness, especially when linked as it is here to specifically to the fossil evidence, seriously misleads students as to the dimensions of the other kinds of evolution, uh, the other kinds of evidence, pardon me, for evolution that Darwin presented and that have been corroborated by 150 years of biologists since. The evidence does not rest solely on the fossil record, not by any means. Uh, even for Darwin, this was far from his uh, primary source of evidence. That was from the facts of the distribution of living things around the earth, living and fossil, from biogeography, and also from comparative anatomy and from embryology, as I say. Uh, so this is, as, and as I said, it's linked very much to a history of attempting to mislead students for sectarian purposes as to the consensus in, in the sciences. And I say this, let me say, not because I have any investment myself in, the, in whether or not evolution is a historical fact. I am a historian, I am not a biologist. I am merely observing the historical record of the history of biology. Any more questions? Great, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much.